What a gloomy day. Are you ready for surprising results in your art practice? Join me as I share my favorite painting exercise for exploring new ideas. Hi there, I'm Janine. I'm an artist and I share my creative journey on this channel. What I'm going to show you today is a great way for exploring new compositions, practice your mark making and for getting more expressive. Whenever I do this exercise, I always come up with unexpected results. This is an exercise many painters use because it is so effective. All you need is a large sheet of paper or you can tape together smaller ones if you don't have a large one, some paint and as many mark making tools as you can get your hands on. We start off with a large sheet of paper, minus a two sized cartridge paper. If you don't have a large sheet, you can tape together several smaller sheets. I use low tack masking tape to tape off smaller squares. I got out a bunch of different mark making tools. I have a spray bottle filled with water, a trowel for larger scrape marks, my catalyst wedge, which sort of works as a smaller version of the trowel, a large round brush, a large flat brush, this plastic fork that I've saved, a smaller flat brush, about one inch wide, this kitchen roll that I've covered in fabric, it's great for rolling over wet paint, and a palette knife. First, I'm spraying a lot of the surface with water, and I'm also adding water with a brush. Then I'm dropping some burnt sienna acrylic ink straight onto the sheet. In the wet areas, it spreads beautifully and creates these soft, ethereal shapes. Then I'm spraying a bit more water onto the ink, so it bleeds some more. Next, I'm using a Neocolor 2 crayon and drag it through the wet ink. I really like how the line keeps on changing from wet to dry. This is another near color. I'm always enjoying scribbly marks. It feels like it's getting the excess energy out of me. I try to create a variety of marks, but I'm noticing how I always tend to make similar marks. It's quite difficult to disregard the tape, but try to ignore it as much as you can and just go over the whole sheet. I'm using some old pre-mixed acrylic paint next. It's a greenish brown color. Because most of the ink is still wet, the paint mixes with the ink and creates interesting effects. I'm adding some more transparent areas by thinning the paint with water. This is some more acrylic paint that I've previously pre-mixed. It's sort of a sage mint colour. I'm experimenting to see what different marks the brush can make. Then I'm dragging a fork through the wet paint. It was getting very wet, so I had to use a hairdryer to dry most of the wet paint quickly. Next, I'm using my catalyst wedge to scrape on larger areas of this beige acrylic paint. Again, I'm trying to see what different marks I can make with the wedge.
Because it's gotten a bit muddy overall, I want to add some pure white paint. I'm experimenting scraping it on with a palette knife. Probably the most satisfying thing about this whole exercise is when you get to pull the tape off and reveal all the little squares. Then I cut them all into individual pieces. If you like this video, consider subscribing. The masking tape always looks really interesting once you've pulled it off with all the little bits still on it. So I put them in my sketchbook because that might serve as inspiration sometime. I really like this edge here that appeared from the thicker paint, for example, and all the little bits of line. It's definitely worth keeping those. Then these are the pieces that I cut up. And I want to go through them and see what I like about them, what could inspire something. So this one I do really like. Um, I wonder which way around I would have it. It's quite interesting that way because it's a bit heavier at the top. I love the contrast between the really soft fuzzy edges here and then the transparent layers over this and then again this is a completely different mark and the edges of where the very diluted paint created a bloom. I think that's what we call it, blooming. So I do really like this one and then also these are lovely. So a lot of different marks going on here which I really like. This one. Okay, it's probably this way is probably the best one way around. I love this line here. I think I scraped through the wet surface with the ink dropper. It's a really interesting mark. And also the white paint over over this area. I really like where the paper had buckles, so the paint didn't scrape over everything completely evenly. That looks very interesting. And then these shapes are very different. And it all still works really well together. I also love the little scribbles. I do love scribbles anyway, really. This has almost got a landscape quality with the big piece at the bottom. I've been quite interested in more landscapey looking things actually. Things that have a horizon line. Here like I showed like I've shown you on the masking tape. I really like this edge, it's just like a ridge and then the scribbly marks and this really soft fuzzy bloomed edges, especially that. And here you can see the brush strokes of where I used the very diluted paint. And then here the wet and wet is super soft. And this again has something landscapey. First, I do really like it this way around, but then when I just looked at it this way, this almost looks like a sun, like a sunset in the distance. Maybe a beach and the um, sea. I love that actually as a landscape. And then there's still a lot of texture in this light area where it's scraped over because you can see the marks of the neo color underneath. And also some, I think where I scraped a bit of the darker paint while I was scraping the beige on here. And then this lighter one over the top. I also like that the this white bit has a line in the middle that sort of mirrors this line. Really cool, I really like that. This one, there's some interesting marks here but overall I think it's probably not a great composition. But I do again like the marks that are appearing everywhere because they're quite similar over all the pieces. This is um, a little bit different. I've scraped over with the white paint. I've got some really interesting effects actually. I didn't think it would. I'm glad I did that at the end with the white paint. So I'm not sure I'll keep that one. But I do really like these. Then this one. Again, love all the marks, but what I don't really like about it is that it's quite bitty. There's a lot of very little marks that you can see. Like all the little dots here everywhere. And this, this bit is just too much. It would probably need something a little bit more solid, maybe. Maybe here, if you made this all 
this darker colour. I would quite like that. And again, you can still work over them. I might do that one day, but for now I'm just selecting the ones I really like. Here, wow, I love this. This really soft blended area together with the really sharp edge of these lines. And then here, all the beautiful colour merging that's happening. Really cool, I like that. And then combine with these other more scribbly lines. Probably my favourite so far, actually. This one, I think it's probably not much there. Some interesting marks, but overall the composition doesn't speak to me as much. This here, again, the marks are very interesting. All this, I probably could maybe crop it even further, just to have the little marks, maybe like this. Mm, not sure, it's not my favorite. This, I don't really know if I like it or if I don't like it. Again, there's a lot going on, but I love that is very blended like this is really beautifully soft and then this blends into this and then this edge kind of also blends into this area and you've got the blooming here a little bit more soft where the water went over the neo color and then this here this is also a really interesting texture with the white over that so i do like that i think i'm going to keep it i think there's something in there that one day might become more apparent. For now I just really like it overall and can't quite put my finger on it. Why? This one's a bit boring. Probably because it doesn't have the burnt um, burnt sienna in it. It's got a tiny tiny splodge. But yeah. Not too much in this one. And this one looks like a jungle almost. It's got all these... I really like these marks actually. I don't usually do marks like that. I really like it. Also here, these underneath the this underneath this scraped area. This is maybe a bit much, but maybe if it was less, more like that, that could be really interesting. Could probably be, put some piece of sort of collage piece that's quite calm on top, and then this stands out a lot more. That would be really good, actually. I might try that this box of lots of collage paper I've made over time. I'm wondering if there's anything in here. Maybe I'll just stick a bit of tissue paper over the top. That might already help. I've just stuck that piece of tissue paper over the top here. It's not ideal, but I think it definitely works. So these ones that I did really like I'm going to stick in a sketchbook. So I wanted to start this a while ago actually because I've got some more bits similar to this. If you stick stuff in a sketchbook like that then it's obviously going to get really thick very quickly. Whereas if you use a spiral bound one it can like expand a bit. So I got this one especially to especially to stick things in. I haven't started yet. This is, you're going to ask me what this is. This is a sea white um, oh, here we go. Sea white eco sketchbook. It's made using reclaimed coffee cups. It's nice, isn't it? It's A4 and 140 grams. I have no idea if it's good for any media because I only wanted it to stick things in. Do I want to leave this page free? I'm not sure. Why not? Let's just start there. Oh, wow, this is a bit too big. But I can chop that off a little bit, that's fine. So I'm going to stick them in and then probably also take some notes. I really hope you give this exercise a try and I'm sure that the results will surprise you too. Thanks and bye bye.